Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to Toy Ploy and part three of the Geek Force Star Wars Vintage Millennium Falcon restoration project. So here in front of me you can see the Falcon as it looked at the end of part two. Most of the ship is uh, coming on really well, it's all put back together and at the end of the last episode you saw me uh, finishing off putting the lights and stuff on. As you see there you can see it's got lights in the front, there's one in the cockpit, uh, one by the gunner station and the little landing lights on the bottom which uh, you can't really see here but they do all work. So that was how we left it at the end of part two. Now this is the final part where I'm hopefully going to finish off all of the final bits, uh, all the final bits of the restoration, mend the last few bits and hopefully find the last few missing parts that I need. So let's start off by fixing a few more elements on this Falcon. First thing we're going to do is uh, fit a battery cover. I'm going to say a big thank you to everybody at the end of uh, this video, all the people who've donated parts to me, uh, but one of the parts I was missing was a battery cover. I've actually been sent two, uh, both in reasonable condition. This one has got a slightly damaged little hook section. It's the bit that sort of hooks on, si on the side uh, to keep it shut. So I'm actually going to use this one just because it's a little bit nicer. Might as well put some uh, nicer bits on. So uh, to fit this, I've actually just got to take uh, the other parts of the ship apart again. So I'm going to unscrew the bits on this and hopefully I can just slot that in uh, and then that's one bit uh, that's missing all replaced. It's quite useful with this ship that you can actually just take bits of it apart to slot the uh, battery cover in. I've just removed the two screws on this side and that's given me enough space to lift up uh, the uh, side of the Falcon and then just slot the battery cover in so I can now just go ahead and screw that back together. The next thing that needed repairing on this Falcon was actually the rear panel. Now I'd never seen this before. On uh, both two sides of the panel there are these little uh, flaps that stick out that hook into sections on the Falcon. And on this one, one of them had uh, snapped off completely. And it's taken me a little while to work out how to replace it. As you can see here, I have actually now replaced it. Uh, it took me a little while to work out what I could do to fix that because this is a problem I had never seen before. Uh, so what I did was actually got an old CD case. Now this is a CD single case because the uh, backs of the these tend to be a solid plastic. Uh, and I've taken that and I've uh, then carefully scored and cut a part of uh, the sort of edge of the CD case off. And I've been using plastic nippers and files and all sorts to score and break this. Uh, the plastic is fairly brittle, so before you cut anything, you do have to score it with a knife. And then when you go to break it, it'll crack along the line that you've scored. So with a little bit of sort of careful uh, modification and cutting, I ended up with a little bit of plastic, a sort of L-shaped bit of plastic, and then glued that on using some super glue. And as you can see, it stuck really nicely. I had to file part of uh, the old uh, sort of Falcon panel away because it had snapped with a very uneven line. Uh, but once it's glued on, it's stuck really nicely, and I managed to do a very firm sort of uh, glue all along the back of uh, this piece. And now it works really nicely. You can clip the panel back in place, and it holds on really firmly. Uh, I will probably paint this in the end. As you can see I've still got a little bit of pen mark on it where I sort of was marking the sizes and I'm going to paint that a, a sort of a grey colour so it matches uh, the original plastic of the Falcon. I've got a few other bits on the top that need a little bit of paint on so I'll do that towards the end. But that panel now fits in the back of the Falcon really nicely. So another piece of uh, this uh, Falcon restored. Next up is the gunner chair. Now I already had the mounting part of this and I've been sent uh, a version of the chair but unfortunately this is broken. A lot of the bits I've been sent for this project are broken and that's great because really all of these things can be fixed and the rest of the Falcon is, su is such a sort of beaten and battered old thing. It's nice to have broken bits in it. I actually really am starting to like it as a Falcon. It's a really nice toy because it's got so much wrong with it and so many fixed bits. I think it's excellent. So this chair that I was sent has uh, one of the tabs on the back broken. Now these tabs are vital for for holding this in place. Uh, there's no real way of replacing it because it's in a really awkward uh, sort of position. So uh, really all I'm going to do is to uh, stick this in place using some uh, the cello tape uh, sticky fixers. Now these are sort of sponge uh, sticky pads uh, and if I just take one off here they're quite thick uh, and should be able to hold this on quite nicely. Uh, there's a, a sort of little uh, well a little raised section on the back there um, because of the way this is moulded. So I'm going to stick one inside that, like so, and hopefully it should line up with this uh, patch here on the uh, back of the chair, and we should be able to stick this in place uh, pretty easily, and that should hold the chair on quite nicely, uh, and probably actually hold it on better than it did originally. The original uh, chairs tend to fall off quite easily, so I think that's going to actually work better. Yeah, there you go, that's quite a, quite a firmly stuck on thing, not going to come off. So we can put that back in the Falcon. 
Next up we have an issue I've shown you how to fix before which is the little peg where the uh, training arm and ball should hang is snapped off and what we're going to use is just a piece of Lego. This is a bit of uh, a Lego lance but you can use the Lego uh, aerials or anything like that. They're all about three millimeters in diameter and a perfect uh, replica size for the pegs. So I'm just going to drill a quick hole in there and glue a piece of this in and that should uh, replace that quite nicely. Some of the cracks that I filled on the Falcon, uh, the filler is a, a different colour to the plastic so I'm just going to use a little bit of humble paint uh, to mix up a sort of slightly grey yellow mixture uh, to cover the cracks and also to uh, paint the new tab that I put on this back section. So I'm just going to be using humble paints. I've got uh, 34 here which is a matte white, 33 which is a matte black and uh, 99 which is a yellow and I'm just going to use that just to tinge uh, the uh, grey so it's not quite sort of full on grey and that should match quite nicely and I'll uh, fix this bit here as I said and if we look at the falcon if I can just turn this round you can see there are some uh, some of the cracks that I've uh, filled here on the top uh, you can see the yellow milliput coming through so I'm just going to paint those uh, before we go and put these stickers on. So now I have the three paints I'm just going to carefully mix these until I get a grey that matches uh, the original sort of grey of the plastic. So a little bit of black, a little bit of white, mix those together and then a little bit of yellow just to take uh, this sort of perfect sort of tone off of uh, the, uh, the grey so that it's uh, slightly yellower. It's not a bad match actually, maybe a little bit darker, but uh, that's pretty good, pretty close. For the Top Gun of the Falcon, as you can see here, I have quite a few different bits uh, in my sort of spares box and bits that people have donated, all of which are broken in some way. So what we're going to do is take the least broken of these pieces and then fix them up. So the least two broken bits are actually these top two. Uh, this one has still has the little pegs on it which is unusual normally those are broken off and uh, both still have the little bottom sections as you can see here quite a few of these pieces are missing uh, the little bottom bit that attaches to the main gunner chair but they have a flaw which is the they are both missing the bottom tips of the gun so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these other broken ones actually I'll leave that one because that's in reasonable condition I can use that for a future restoration but we take this one which is missing the little bottom bit uh, as you can see there uh, but has two reasonably good uh, front gun pieces. This one actually has already been glued so we'll count that one as a junk for the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off uh, the two front parts of the guns and we're going to transplant them onto the two bottom bits that are broken here uh, and glue them and drill them in place. So let's uh, get going with that and I'll show you how to do it. So initially what we need is the front two sections of this one. Uh, where these are broken is actually in a very weak point and I'm not going to repair it there. I'm going to repair it slightly behind. So if you look at the front gun there's a sort of a bulbous ring there. I'm going to chop that off uh, and then we'll attach it to the main sort of cone part behind. Which means on this one we need to chop off uh, the two guns just uh, behind the ring. So I'm going to use a pair of plastic nippers and very carefully just cut through the plastic uh, just behind that uh, ring like so and as you can see that cuts quite nicely and we end up with quite a nice large section that we can use uh, to attach onto the other gun. So now we have the two sort of front end pieces what we've got to do is chop off uh, the broken part of uh, both of these front barrels. Now I'm going to chop off slightly uh, in front of where I want the final cut to be and then I'm going to file it down so that I have much more control using a small uh, little file than I do with these plastic nippers. So if I just chop this off a little bit forward of it it's not that easy to do. I might even actually do this at an angle just take a bit off at a time. 
yeah that's that's better like that so it looks a bit rough at the moment but I can then file this down and I have much more control So there you go, with a bit of filing I've managed to get a nice flat in there which is just behind the little sort of uh, cylinder section and that should now allow me enough space to uh, fit the new front part of the gun on. As you can see that's a much neater uh, fit now. Now what, rather than just gluing this on, if I glue it on it's liable to just break off again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully drill a one millimetre hole in the end here and also a one millimetre hole in the end here and then I'm going to use a small piece of a paper clip to uh, stick into that hole and reinforce it just so it's a little bit stronger. Uh, it's fairly fiddly to do but it will make for a much better repair than just uh, straight gluing this on. If you just glue it on the chances of knocking that off are going to become uh, quite high so uh, with a little bit of reinforced uh, sort of metal inside it it should be a much better uh, fix and is very unlikely to break. In fact you're more likely to break the other one than uh, you will be to break the one that we've fixed. So I'm going to get the other gun prepared and then we can do both of these at the same time. So here we have my drill with a one millimetre drill bit in. It's a fairly small drill bit, uh, but what I can do is very carefully drill a small hole in the end of this. And you know, you need to do it right in the centre. So take your time. It's probably best to do this with a vise, but uh, I don't have a vise in this room, so I've got to be very careful. Now you only need to go in a few millimetres, just long enough that you can put a small piece of the uh, paper clip in. So there you go, you can see there's a very small hole in there. And if I get my paper clip, that should just fit in nicely. In fact, it's a little tight, so I might just uh, widen that hole a bit, but it will fit in as you can see. And then we can drill another equally small hole in here just to reinforce the end of the tip. So as you can see I've drilled two very small holes in the end there and we've got to do the same on these. Now these are obviously a lot smaller so it's a little bit more fiddly uh, but again it can be done with practice. Uh, it's probably better with a, a vise or something to hold it but I'll just do it freehand today. And there you go, it's as simple as that. Now that we have all the bits ready we can start gluing them back together. So what I've got to do is I've got my paper clip here. I'm just going to put a small amount of super glue on one end. Just a small blob like that. And then I'm going to push this into the main gun section. Oops. And we'll let that super glue set. And then I can trim off uh, the paper clip just so that there's a little bit sticking out and we can stick the uh, end of the gun back on. I've just trimmed off the uh, little bit of paper clip so you can see there's just a tiny amount sticking through the end and then I can just again blob on a little bit of super glue onto the end of that. You don't need a great deal because it will get sort of pushed down and then you can take the end that I've done and we can carefully push this on. You've got to just make sure that it's up the right way and pointing in the right direction same as the original gun above it. And then we'll let that glue set but as you can see that's uh, pretty pretty good fix and that should in fact be stronger than the one above it now because obviously it's got a bit of metal inside it. Uh, so I'll go on and do the other side and then that's that Top Gun fixed. And here we have the fully restored Top Gun. As you can see that all fits on quite nicely and all rotates well and it's very hard to tell actually even that those bottom uh, two little bits of the gun have been replaced. It's a pretty pretty clean fix. I would be hard pushed to notice that those had been uh, mended at all. So everything else on this Falcon has been fixed and mended so we're going to add stickers. Now I've printed out some stickers that I've used on my previous restorations. These are printed out on a glossy sticky backed uh, paper uh, and this file is available on toyploy.com if you want to uh, do them yourselves. Uh, it's free of charge so just go and download that. I'm not going to show you uh, me sticking them on because it's a very boring job and it takes about an hour so I'm just going to go ahead and I will stick these stickers on and then I'm going to add some battle damage stickers to make this look a little bit more sort of like it should do in the movie. So uh, let's get these stuck on and then we'll add the battle damage. With the stickers all in place it's starting to look like a traditional Falcon but I want to go one step further on this. Obviously because I've added the custom lights it's not an original Falcon so I want to also add some battle damage and if you've watched some of my previous videos you'll have seen that I created these uh, battle damage stickers that are sort of generic. You can use them on any vehicle. Uh, you can get these from uh, toyploy.com. So I printed out a few of these. These are printed onto some clear sticky backed acetate. So I just got to carefully cut around them and I can sort of 
dot them all over the ship just to make it look a little bit more sort of world weary. So there's some nice areas on the side of the cockpit here where you could uh, stick some battle damage. There's a few areas on the top and a few areas on the bottom. So I'm just going to stick a few little bits around just so it looks a little bit more beaten and worn. Uh, and then I think we're going to call this uh, restoration done. So uh, let's get these stuck on and we'll see how the final ship looks. And here we have the finished ship. It's all now fully back together. I've added the battle damage. You can see I've put little bits here, little bits here, just little bits all over the ship, just to make it look a little bit more sort of weathered and worn like the Falcon would be in the movies. And of course, if I switch that switch there, you can see the lights come on uh, and everything is looking quite nice. If I load, raise up the cockpit, you can see there's a light in there and everything is back and working. So this really has been a labor of love. It's been an awful lot of work. I never expected to be able to get it looking this good considering what I was given at the start because the original ship was in a particularly battered state everything was pretty much broken on it or missing. So I have to say thanks to an awful lot of people at the end of this video. I've said thanks in previous videos for uh, certain parts, but for this video, I need to thank Martin Loy, Melissa Ward, Paul Coulthard, Kevin Mitchell and Steve Edmonds, all of which sent in different parts in various states of uh, disrepair and sort of broken but all of them have come in really useful and I've been able to uh, get this ship back up and running. So a big thanks to everyone who's helped uh, by donating parts for this restoration. So I'm now going to return this to the guys at Geek Force and they will be raffling it off in the coming weeks. So uh, check out all their social media and Facebook pages. I'll put links to all of those in the description for this video uh, and keep an eye on that because uh, it's well worth uh, entering the raffle because this is a really nice item. It's something I would actually quite like to keep, but as it's a charity thing, I can't. So I'm going to give it back to them, but I may even enter myself just on the off chance that I win it back because it is a lovely uh, Falcon. It's battered, it's beaten around the edges, but it's really nice. I do like uh, ships that are like this, that have a, signs of wear and play, that they've been played with over the years. And just that you can take something so battered and make it look so great. So I hope these videos have been of interest to you all. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.